In an earlier section, we talked about the principle of cultural relativism. In other words, the idea that different cultures exist at the same time. And even though all of these cultural realities are equally valid, some are more popular than others. Popular cultures are communicated on a large scale and both through personal and mediated communication. And the umbrella term for these types of cultures is of course pop culture. And scientists are for very different reasons interested in the study of pop culture. And they study carriers of pop culture like songs, movies, literature, game shows, video games, basically everything that is deemed popular and communicates mainstream values, ideas and truths. Interest in the field of pop culture has increased since the 60s. I want to briefly discuss this research theme with you. Why are we actually interested in pop culture? Well, for many different reasons. I will name a few without any particular order. Pop culture is often seen as a reflection of mainstream society. The idea is, if we study pop culture, we learn how society works, which rules and truths are in place, and where power resides. Do you recognize the influence of social constructionism here? To continue this line of thought, pop culture is considered a building block of a shared social reality. Some scholars oppose to the reflection thesis. They argue that pop culture is actually artificially created, that it is in fact a fake culture or a fake consciousness. It is not a reflection of mass society, but in fact something created by powerful members of the elite who control the media landscape. These powerful few created pop culture to keep themselves in power. That is, according to this theory, the main function of pop culture, to maintain the current power structures. So pop culture is designed to keep the masses ignorant, to distract the audience, and keep their thoughts away from the unfair distribution of wealth and power in the world. Pop culture is used to teach people to obey the law and obey powerful institutions. It is used to screen us from reality, to keep some knowledge from the public agenda and keep people's mind on other inconsequential things like scandals involving actors or rock stars or what's going to happen on tomorrow's soap opera. This also explains why pop culture, according to many scholars, does not provoke thought, is unoriginal and of low quality. The theory was first developed by members of the Frankfurter School, a group of loosely affiliated scientists that were particularly active in the 1920s, 40s and 60s. They were not only scientists, but also very politically active. Their theories and findings were often used to show the need for social change and emancipation. Frankfurter scholars were often accused of being Marxist, and not without reason. Indeed, the Frankfurter School tried to explain why the revolution that Marx had predicted, where laborers of the world would revolt, hadn't happened. Their answer in a nutshell, because pop culture, communicated through mass media, is specifically created to prevent it, to keep us docile. In a way, the media serve as opium for the people, creating a passive audience that's unlikely to start a revolution. If you want to connect theories, this Frankfurter approach actually fitted nicely with the old mass audience paradigm that we covered in week three. This traditional audience paradigm saw the masses as passive and unable to select and block messages. Even though the Frankfurter School does not have many supporters today, their negative views on popular culture are often seen as somewhat elitist, it is historically important because they were the first to focus their questions on how pop culture was created and how it related to a larger societal context. We will talk about several more modern approaches to pop culture in our next section.